thank you. Thank you very much um, for that, um, that, that great presentation. Um, I'm going to give a few reflections. Um, I'm not the um, expert on this uh, in the way that my colleague here, Stefan, certainly is. So I'll give a little bit more of the discussant time to, to him. Um, but I do, I do have some things which I hope will help provoke a, provoke a discussion. I mean, I think the first thing to say is this is a really important topic. Um, and, you know, I think it's an important topic uh, for several reasons, but probably most of all that it, it kind of brings the, the, the cluster of issues around, around risk sort of into, into the mainstream a little bit. This is not just an agenda for people who wear hard hats or go around doing contingency planning. This is an agenda for all of us. And I think the WDR um, does a very good job on uh, in building a persuasive case why this is an agenda for, for all of us who work in and on and around development. So I think it's, it's very important from that point of view. As is in the, the, the good tradition of WDRs, it's also an incredibly comprehensive treatment of the issues. Um, WDRs have that reputation of you know, grabbing an issue and then you know, pretty much at looking at it from every possible angle. And this report certainly does much of that. It is very uh, wide ranging in its consideration of, of types uh, and sources of risk. Uh, although perhaps some might argue it could have spent more time really getting to grips with different taxonomies of risk. But nevertheless, it's a very wide ranging treatment and a very wide ranging treatment of issues around risk management. So um, it sort of continues that tradition of world development reports of being a very comprehensive report. And for any student of development who is thinking about looking into issues of risk and risk management, there's a fantastic, as always, bibliography that gives you all the latest uh, uh, references and, and, and evidence in, in that regard. But to some extent, I'm wondering whether that great strength of this report, which is its sort of comprehensivity, may also slightly harbour a weakness. Um, and I'm wondering if that weakness is, is that if, if everything, in a sense, can be seen through a risk lens, do we start to lose some analytical traction, if you like, around the concept of risk? And do we start to lose a sense of really what are the most crucial entry points for different actors in the process of of um, both identifying and also managing or mitigating risk. It's a question, really. It's, I'm not sort of putting it up as a major criticism of the report, but I do think once one begins <coughs> to take this incredibly all-encompassing approach to risk, which the report does, everything from the most individual in idiosyncratic type risks all the way through to what you might call the big existential <laughs> risks of our time, one begins to think, to sort of lose you in a way a little bit around well, what's absolutely fundamentally important here, uh, and particularly as we think about, about development and the whole you know, project behind development and the processes of development that we're trying to support. So that's just thing, one thing in my mind about whether it, there's a sort of sense in which it's almost sort of so comprehensive that you lose analytical traction slightly. And I suppose the one distinction that I, I've heard mentioned here but I didn't see treated um, perhaps as systematically as I'm, I, I might have liked, is a sort of distinction between what you might call kind of risks to development and the risks that emerge out of development itself, because development is about structural change, transformation, creative destruction, and risks emerge inevitably from that, and also from the very act of intervening in the development process. Um, Development interventions create risk. They create opportunity. Well, the idea is at least they create opportunity, but they also create risk. And it would seem to me, certainly from the bank's perspective, that it would have been very interesting to spend a little bit more time. And it's possible it's in there, and I haven't seen it, because I confess I have read the overview very carefully, selectively read through the rest of the report, but I missed it. A, a, a slightly more reflective piece around the extent to which development interventions are also part and parcel of this of this uh, risk story. And the reason I say that is I think if one, if the emphasis is on, as I certainly read it, and I'm happy to be put right by 
by the two authors here. If the emphasis is on largely on risks to development, it's all about then institutions coming together at multiple levels to kind of almost create safe space for development to happen. It's about putting in place protocols and, and, and bureaucratic mechanisms and others to sort of almost neutralise the risk environment so that develop can, development can happen. Now, we know that that isn't how development happens, and I'm sure that's not the intention, but it sort of slightly feels to me that, we're, that the report is, is, t is taking that position. So the, the focus on risk management then becomes very much about, about a set of, of, of mechanisms that need to be put in place, and perhaps less about thinking through, well, how does that very process of responding to risk and intervening in development in itself uh, generate risks that we need to try and get to grips with and have some response to. Um, so, so I suppose my first thing is point is that I think it would have been particularly interesting to have a bit clearer distinction between this notion of risks to and risks from or in <laughs> development, because I think actually that um, would provide us a way into then possibly doing more work on not only uh, evaluating the great results from interventions, um, but also uh, a much um, closer look at how they generate risk um, and what we do about those risks. In some ways, the the, if I take that thought and lead it to its logical end, it also um, raises a question about whether you know, the whole thesis around risk management can in, in and of itself harbour unintended consequences which themselves can be risk creating and I think you know one can get into sort of feedback loops that you can't ever escape from but it seems to me that there needs to be more awareness about the extent to which um, many <coughs> of the responses that go under the banner of risk management can actually have um, uh, risk consequences themselves and I'm thinking here there's a lot of emphasis in the report on, on using various insurance type mechanisms um, there's acknowledgement of the, the relevance and the role of informal mechanisms, for example, of, of self-insurance, if you like, and coping that take place within households and communities all of the time, and I think that's right, but I think we're also very aware that many of those mechanisms can also generate real losers, actually. They're not all equalising and risk-sharing. I mean, there are, there are real uh, challenges that take place even within those informal mechanisms. They can be very... Um, uh, beneficial for some but not necessarily for all and again a little bit more of acknowledgement there but I think on the other hand um, you know many of the uh, suggestions around using insurance based mechanisms to, to to manage risk I mean I think my understanding is that there you know there are many instances in which insurance based mechanisms for example can create you know, many unintended consequences, if you like, for those who are both insured or not insured. Um, there's a lot of enthusiasm for these type of schemes, whether it's, you know, weather-based insurance, index insurance, health insurance at the moment. Uh, my sense is that, that, that some of the evidence there w is, is beginning to throw up a number of, of, of downsides, if you like, or downside risks that emerge from those very interventions themselves. And I think we need more work, more empirical work, more evidence to show how those costs and benefits are actually distributed amongst, amongst individuals. And it seems to me that there's not quite enough reflection in the report about how those interventions, insurance is the obvious response to risk, but actually a lot of people lose. So let's be clearer that these are not perfect solutions and they need to be adapted and so forth in the, in the face of evidence. Cash transfers. Lots and lots of enthusiasm. You know, I'm certainly one. The evidence on just give people cash as a way to help smooth expenditure, as a way to, to cover uh, uh, certain episodic costs and so forth. There's lots of really positive evidence. But equally, there's also <laughs> a fair amount of evidence that they themselves can actually generate greater risks for some. And if you provide cash transfers while failing to improve service quality, for example, in health and education, what do you end up with? You essentially end up with a mechanism that helps smooth on the one hand, but you actually get no improvements in outcomes on the other. And again, I think taking a closer look at interventions and how they are part of this risk 
um, scenario um, would, would actually really add some, <coughs> some flavour to, to this report. The five principles of public action is kind of where I want to end up. And um, you put those up right at the end, I think. And I think with all due respect, I mean, the report is really rich. But I think when it comes down to it, your five principles could have written b been written well before you wrote this report. They are absolutely <coughs> predictable for the bank at this stage. They don't challenge anybody, in my view. Um, and I think if you were to really take the full flavour of this report and some of the additional points I've just raised about the fact that, you know, development interventions themselves are sort of part of the story of changing risk profiles and so forth, you could actually have come up with slightly less predictable principles of action. Um, some of the things that I, I would have thought you need to be to referring to is that, you know, there are few shortcuts to effective risk management. There are, you know, beside, despite what a lot of people say, there are few blueprints here. A lot of risk management comes down to matrices and protocols and and so forth. But actually, rarely do those, you know, outlive um, the fact that, that, that risk is changing all the time. So we need different kinds of responses. We need more agile types of responses. So I think one of the principles should be, you know, in a sense, um, there are no shortcuts. <laughs> um, how about an emphasis on, on, on looking much more closely at interventions and the way in which risk management tools themselves can be part of the evolving uh, risk uh, landscape and the need to evaluate interventions for risk as much as for results. The notion of subsidiarity, engage with risk where the cost is greatest. There, it's a very kind of, it feels like a fairly centrist agenda you know, forward plan, long-term view, don't do bad things. <laughs> Who, where, what, and at what level of engagement? I think something that engages much more with a notion of subsidiarity would be, would be helpful. And the final um, area that I missed, but uh, I'm prepared to accept that I just didn't get this far in the report, is any real reflection on how the instruments of development cooperation really need to change in the face of a report like this? I mean, we're moving increasingly into a world in which, you know, essentially development cooperation is being blended and patched together with other forms of development finance. Development finance, which actually has more sophisticated approaches to risk management than aid or concessional finance has ever had. It seems to me to be a very rich uh, discussion there to be had about how new instruments for development cooperation can take on board a very wide range of... of, of um, risk management tools that, op that operate within the private sector and elsewhere, to, to really come up with a new instrument set for um, sharing risk, for mitigating risk, and quite frankly, for taking risk um, in, in support of development. So I would have liked to have seen a principle that was also um, focused around the need for new instruments and, and a fairly careful look at what those might look like. That's me. <laughs>